Ahora pues. of the desk of caps cop or capsule communicator the only person in the entire room speaks with the astronaut wow they speak with the astronaut from here astronaut staying there for one year they studying how their body will get changed in the space to make sure astronaut get safe in the space more than one year we are going to actual work station for astronauts These are the space station parts Here you can see how they making astronaut space station parts These are the very big part of the space station Left side in 
the yellow color, you can see it's called a space vehicle. And what they need to, they can only take it to exit their space suit. This allows the space clock to be started in a little outfit. Compared to the space suit, they take on board the items which can take two hours to put on. Look how they are working in the workstation. Now we are going to the next part. We're now driving through the Johnson Space Center Memorial Grove. To your right is the employee grove where trees are planted in memory of that. Under each tree you can see they created memories of died astronauts. of a big rocket. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. These are the wheels of the rocket you can see. These are the big, big machines of the rocket. The rocket is so big length. Wow! It says USA. That could be America too. This is the real rocket. It is very big and huge and giant. I never seen giant things like this, like the rocket. This rocket went to the moon. Its name is Saturn V. It's a first stage or part of rocket. This is the second stage of Saturn V rocket. This is the middle part between two stages of rocket. These are so critical machines. Third stage of Saturn V rocket. Let's blast off! This is the inside part of rocket. Stage 4. You can see all the stages of the rocket from here. <laughs> wow, we're going inside a tunnel. <laughs>
on the planet another six months to a year, while you wait on the orbits of Earth and Mars to realign for another seven to eight months journey back to home. Now, while you are on the planet, you will explore and do various scientific experiments. Now, we're not going to study on the Mars because next year, These are the different kinds of birds food which astronaut eating in the space. Vanilla bar, orange bar, ginger bar, vanilla bar, nut bar. A lose your comb. You might lose your toothbrush. And I don't know. You look like the type to me that might even lose his underwear. So for that reason, every astronaut is assigned to a sleep restraint unit like this one right here. So guess what? It's time for you to head to bed and hop on in there. All right, you got an armhole over here. Another one on this side. Now we're gonna zip you up and send you off to Neverland. There is one more strap that'll have to go right here across your forehead. And that's to keep the head from bobbing up and down while you're sleeping. Because in space, every time the heart pumps blood through the body, the force of it will cause the head to bob. So we have to secure it properly. So tell me, how does it feel trying to sleep being strapped to the wall? I don't know. <laughs> You're speechless, wow. Well, if this made you speechless, I can only imagine what you're going to say when we stick you in this top bunk up here. You ready? No, not like... Okay. I'm just picking you stay right where you are. Stay right there. Hey, but guys, in space, there is no such thing as up, down, east, west, ceiling, or floor. So we can put an astronaut right here where you are. Another one can go up here. One could go against this wall. And one can even go right where I'm standing. And you would all feel exactly the same. But being that we're here on Earth, no one's going to feel comfortable trying to sleep hanging upside down for eight hours. Feet pedals down there. You got to handle bars. We need you to start exercising. Because one of the negatives of living in space is that microgravity reduces our muscle mass and our bone density. It's kind of like an accelerated aging process. So to counteract this, the astronauts have to exercise a total of two hours a day, seven days a week for the entire time that they're in space. It's our waste hygiene compartment. Or as he said, it's the space toilet. But we just went to the bathroom. We now need to wash our hands. Well, that's done right here. But something is missing. What's missing? Yeah, there's no sink or water. Because remember, guys, in space, water is what? It's valuable. So the astronauts, they have to use an antibacterial hand wipe to wash their hands. We use larger versions of these wipes to bathe our entire bodies. We also use a waterless shampoo that NASA's developed. So keeping clean in space is just as important as it is here on Earth. It's just that we have to do it a little bit differently. No different. And for that reason, all of our food is packaged inside of a pouch. Each pouch comes equipped with Velcro on it, as does the astronaut uniform. So let's say you and I are going to sit down and enjoy this delicious meal of rice and chicken. When all of a sudden, an alarm goes off. Well, we're 250 miles above the Earth. We've got to go take care of that problem. And we can't leave our food laying here to just float around everywhere. So, what are we going to do? Oh, you just simply attach it to yourself, you take it with you, then when you're done solving that problem, you can enjoy your meal. 
Hey, you know what we call that in Spanish? Hey, today you've demonstrated for our audience sleeping, exercising, going to the bathroom, personal hygiene, and now food preparation. But the station is more than a place to live. It's also a space laboratory where we conduct all kinds of research that cannot be done down there in Earth's gravity. Now here on Earth, gravity keeps this tasty beverage inside. But if we were to take gravity away, let's see what will happen. Now with gravity gone, surface tension is going to become the dominant force. So I want you to notice how when two blobs of water come together, they merge into an even larger blob of water. Physics appears to behave differently in microgravity. And when it comes across an absorbent surface, such as this towel over here, a wicking action takes over and sucks it right into the towel, just like a sponge. Oh, hey look! It looks just like you. Now, first of all, the fluids in your body are gonna move up out of your arms and legs, causing your face to get puffy and your legs to go thin. The astronauts on the station, they've given it a highly scientific name. They call it chicken legs. Now, all of your bones lose calcium. Your spine will grow by two inches. And in microgravity, your heart will shrink a little bit. Oh, but don't worry, when you went back to Earth's gravity, yours gradually went back to normal. But because of all the calcium loss and some other issues, I'm afraid his recovery will become a little more difficult. Oh, hold on a moment. Now, notice how a candle flame looks here on Earth. See the shape of the flame? It burns in a teardrop. Well, have you ever asked yourself why? Well, it's that fire. You see, it heats up the air and causes it to rise. Cooler air then rush in to take its place. This process is called convection, and it's the reason why all flames here on Earth burn in this shape, round at the bottom, pointing at the top. But in microgravity, hot air cannot rise. There's no convection, no airflow. So what does it do? Well, as you see here, it'll burn as a round globe instead of the teardrop. And it burns more completely, much cleaner, and more efficiently. So, having this microgravity laboratory, it allows us the opportunity to find out why it does this, and can we get it to do this here on Earth? Because that could be very important to the future of engine design. You see, the microgravity research on the physics of combustion, well, it can one day lead us to more efficient fuel, as well as less pollution. Now, have you ever tried to mix large quantities of lead and tin? Well, lead is heavy, it sinks, and the tin just rises. They don't go together. They're kind of like oil and water. But in microgravity, lead and tin can easily be mixed to form a new alloy. One that's used for all kinds of products like electronics for your uh, um, uh, mobile phones as, um, as well as computers. Now, the only thing is, is that it cannot be made in Earth's gravity. But that microgravity environment that's up on the station, it's a unique laboratory for medical research and development. So I want you guys to pretend like you're a scientist there on Earth. Now, you're studying this really bad disease or bug. Well, you're gonna need to grow some cells to experiment on. The problem is, is that in Earth's gravity, the living cell cannot grow very large outside of the human body before their own body weight will crush them and they die. But cells that are grown in microgravity thrive. They grow quicker, larger, and in three dimensions. And this is a huge medical breakthrough. You see, we can generate large quantities of these cells, and the scientists there on Earth, they can study the data. So in the coming days, we should see some advances in the fields of disease control, genetics, biochemistry, and organ transplants. All because we have a microgravity laboratory called the ISS.
Well, guys, you have seen here today how the International Space Station is already helping us to better our lives here on Earth right now. But it's what it's going to do for us in the future that's even more exciting. You see, the station is a stepping stone in our journey off this planet, beyond lower Earth's orbit, past our moon, onto the asteroid. To our next destination, the red planet Mars. And yes, even to the billions of stars that lie beyond. And who knows, guys, it is quite possible that some future explorers could have been sitting in the audience with us today. Jumping so high, but how are they jumping? Do you know? Because I know they are jumping so high. It's because there is no gravity on moon or other any planets. There only gravity on Earth, and that's how they jump. This is the space vehicle. They, that's how they travel on the moon. They don't have cars or bikes or cycles on the moon. They
our moon earth looks like this it is like we cannot see moon but when we go to the moon we can see earth wow that's so cool astronauts floating there is no gravity there is no gravity because the moon doesn't have gravity and the rocket they can float and jump and go there and even touch the ceiling you can see satellite floating in space there's no gravity remember this is the apollo mission in 1975 This is the space shuttle.
is that? It's a cardboard. Leaf. Plastic. Platinum. These are. These are the metals from the planets. Now I come on the Mars. Wow, it's so ready, rocky planet. You can see this is the mission Mars. Nice car you have. I have a biggest This is the weight you feel on Earth. Ugh. And this is the weight you feel on Mars. Which is heavy. You are on Mars now. Good job, Sia. You did it. You look great. Good job. What are you doing? You selecting space shoot for you? Wow, that nice one. Well, what are the things you have? Which shoot should it be? I think it should be. Space suits. Select your orange. Select your space suit. Can you show me? They can float everywhere. Look at the apple and orange floating. This is fun. I'm sitting inside the rocket. This is the overview of NASA Center.
These are the different kind of astronauts space suits. They are wearing their space suits to go to outer space. These are lots of pictures of astronauts that go to the moon. I want to become an astronaut. Wow! So many astronaut teams that go to the space. Wow, there are lots and lots of tons of pictures. And this is the white astronaut space suit. It is big. Subscribe Sierra's World. Bye.